Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. 46-year-old male patient came to ER with complaint of intermittent episode of fever uh, since one week. On initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented. Coming to primary survey, airway was appears patent, no secretions and no frothing. Breathing, ironary bilateral equal, respiratory rate is 20 breath per minute, saturation 98% was known room air. Circulation part, BP was 110-80. Pulse rate is 96 per minute, CRT less than 3 second. Disability GCS I4 V5 M6, people is 2.5 mm bilateral equilibrium rate to light. Ex coming to exposure, temperature was 100 degree, uh, GRBS is 100 mm deciliter. Uh, coming to urgent to primary survey, you would take a VBG and a CBC point of care. CBC showing total kind of 15,000 platelet is. What is the difference between VBG and ABG? Uh, Sorry, there is a point 0.1 difference in the uh, bicarbonate. Point 0.3. Point 0.3 difference in the... Uh, uh, point 0.03. So point 0.03 difference. It's a very, very Maybe. negligible difference in pH. But other areas? Uh, uh, PO, no, PO2 Sugar and cannot be matched uh, because arterial and pH, ABG, venous will be different. Then PCO2 level will, PCO2 be, will be different. different. The rest of all will be almost similar. Okay. Coming to CBC. For electrolyte imbalance, pH, knowing the pH, VBG is more than sufficient for uh, taking the sample from venous, uh, like veins or something. Okay. Coming to CBC CRP point of care, total count is 15,000, platelet is 58,000, CRP is 100, yeah. uh, and VBG pH is 7.4, uh, PCO2 is 34, by count 26, creatinine was 1.5, lactate was 1.2. Mm. And with this primary survey and history, can a patient's creatinine is 1.5? How do you know that the patient is having chronic renal failure or acute renal failure? So, your first time you are seeing the patient in emergency room, creatinine is 1.5. It is slightly higher than the normal 1.4 for is mm. our lab cutoff. Uh, can you look for the potassium? Potassium can be high in both acute and chronic renal failure. Other, US, other imaging USC, you can run. Okay, USC, USC corticomedullary differentiation can be seen. Urea. Urea will be? Uh, if it is more than 1 is to 20, it is pre renal. So, very high urea and mildly elevated, disproportionate, disproportionate elevation, like 1 is to 20. That is, a, uh, that is a sign of pre renal, pre -renal. cause for renal, renal failure. failure. Then, anemia, anemia is another important finding which can be. Due to chronic renal failure. And calcium, phosphorus, okay, hypercalcemia cal and hyperphosphate may seen in CKD. Okay, okay. Fundus? Fundus, uh, fundus, fundus examination. Fundus so, these are the things you can correlate uh, most of the time in emergency room. But 100% uh, perfect diagnosis, it is not possible. Mm. Okay. But ultrasound abdomen is mm. one thing which can sometimes tell you that this is a chronic renal failure because the corticomedullary difference is maintained or, maintained or not. That is the easiest thing we can do. Okay. ECG also we can. ECG there what findings? Hypertensive you? features like LVH will be. That suppose somebody is saying hypertension, if he develops leptospira. Oh. So that is, not, that is not relating to your renal failure, but chronic renal failure with high BP, high BP you can have so LVH. Uh, coming to secondary survey, there is a 46 year old male patient, a daily wager, come to our ER with a complaint of intermittent episode of fever since one week. Patient also complained of myalgia, joint pain and difficulty in walking. Later, patient had developed decreased urine since two days. There is no history of cough, breathlessness, hemotysis, dysuria, loose stool. There is no history of abdominal pain, rashes or bleeding manifestation, no history of altered sensorium. Mm, there is no any history of drug allergy, no history of any medical history also. Uh, with this history and our point of care showing uh, leukocytosis with uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, we will send uh, dengue uh, and NS1 antigen and combo and uh, leptospira to rule out. Okay. So, what are the basic investigations? Uh, I understood that you have sent so many investigations. What are the basic investigations you do in a fever patient? Now, recent guidelines have come that uh, today, without any uh, proper investigation, you cannot start antibiotic also. Mm. So, that uh, national guidelines have come. 
in that view may not be practical always but uh, what are the basic investigation you do to rule out an infection or diagnose an infection uh, basic routine cbc we will complete complete blood, blood count. count we will send uh-huh. uh, serum electrolytes also suppose complete blood count is high what do you suspect uh like leukocytosis like it is more low, what will you suspect viral picture means uh, leukopenia with lymphocytosis we will more likely to viral picture viral if it is uh, leukopenia any bacterial infection can occur what bacterial infection is known when the is uh, can produce low wbc count or normal wbc count it's a severe infection what is that infection typhoid typhoid, typhoid. typhoid is one mm. bacterial infection that is very common mm. in our country there are a lot of other infections also can may present like that but in our country one of the common infections that can have a normal wbc count is typhoid mm. okay then crp crp can be elevated in all types of mm. inflammation Inflamed. non infectious also it can be elevated mm. then uh procalcitonin. then procalcitonin what is the role of procalcitonin procalcitonin more increased in gram negative bacteria okay. if it is high elevated we can also see the severity also it is okay. elevating we can there is idea to hike up the antibiotic okay mm. so if when you are starting antibiotic if it comes down can you hike down or deescalate the antibiotic continue the antibiotic you have to continue that is not there that guideline is not there you cannot uh you cannot deescalate the antibiotic depending on the procalcitonin level you can only initiate the antibiotic okay then any other investigation to rule out infection they are called as infection screen ferritin inflammatory marker ferritin is an only inflammatory marker okay. you can get in dengue fever you can get sometimes very high adult onset still disease there is a non infectious condition you can get very high count okay hmm? ESR is an old test but still it uh, it has got value what is the difference between ESR and CRP what is the difference both are same both are different ha hmm. huh? test to be different hmm. no? CSR is classically elevated in chronic infection chronic inflammation but CRP is an acute phase reaction no. only acutely it will increase and after that it will come down like chronic tuberculosis only esr will be elevated but crp may increase when there is an uh, acute problem then it will come down okay there is a difference between crp and esr other inflammatory markers other than crp esr ldh ferritin ferritin ldh uh, tell me one negative inflammatory markers negative it means the low level indicates inflammation album album so that is you should know all this these are the basic investigation you do in emergency room and you make a uh, probable diagnosis urine routine chest x ray so these are basic investigation you do ho, to make a diagnosis blood culture blood culture urine routine urine now routine. now you have to focus on blood culture because national guidelines have come to start antibiotic we need to take cultures okay that is not practical everywhere but you should know about culture how do you take a culture steril precautions from mm. two sides we will take so ideally we need to take st- uh, at least two sides and two sets of samples uh, samples one is aerobic aerobic and another one is anaerobic. anaerobic can you get anaerobic culture if we are doing so many cultures is it possible to get anaerobic culture in routine practice It is very very rare okay but even then culture should be taken like that at least two samples three is uh, advisable at least two samples from different side in different time and in that two samples two set has to be there okay whatever it is that has to be taken okay so these are called as in, in, infection screens mm. suppose you suspect other like a leptospira or any other things you have to send that type so of investigation leptospira what is in what are the investigations you do uh, we can take blood urine and if there is meningitis features urine okay. what you will see urine dark field microscopy we can see okay. uh, is bacteria. it a fresh urine or old urine fresh fresh, urine. fresh only fresh you can see this motile uh, bacillus spirosis. okay then uh, blood we can check with uh, pcr and sero- serology okay. uh, pcr will be positive uh, initial 1 to 7 days okay. uh, then it is becomes 
immune phase, then it is a serology IGM. is better. IgM, IgM. is Up or IgG is. also we can send. What is the difference between IgM? IgM and is IgM. an acute infection, but IgG titer is increasing within subsequent dose. We can so after some time also IgG, IgG can be elevated. IgM acutely elevates after one week, mm -hmm. and it will come down within one week. Okay, so that is IgM. Uh, lep, uh, dengue, what is the investigation of choice? Uh, dengue, NS1 antigen and IgM. Second, second week. Second. Okay. Uh, typhoid? Typhoid, viral test. Viral? First week? First week, blood, blood, blood culture. culture. Second week only, viral. viral. What is the other common infection in our country? Malaria. Thank you, malaria. What is the investigation of choice? Uh, thick smear and thin smear. Peripheral blood smear. smear. And? Antigen, malaria antigen. Malaria antigen, antigen and? and QBCMP. Okay, so these are the routine investigation we do in emergency room to make a diagnosis. Okay. And mm -hmm. So this patient uh, came to our hospital uh, after one week. Okay. So we uh, sent uh, lepto PCR and IgM. Lepto PCR was negative. IgM came to positive. Okay. Uh, so we started with uh, injection doxycycline, 100 okay. mg. Uh, so, what do you think about that phase of leptospirosis? Uh, initial uh, leptospirosis can be divided into two phases. Modern uh, phases. Modern okay. phases. One is anectric phase and ectric phase. Ectric anectric phase, phase containing uh, acute phase and immune phase. Okay. Uh, acute phase is initial uh, one to ten, nine to ten days. Okay. Uh, Normally, clinical practice, it is only seven days. Seven you days. can see in most of the patients. First week will be without any problem. Patient can have some fever, two, three days. Then fever will subside for uh, two three days. Again, fever occurs mm. because of the immune, immune phase. phase. That time, patient can have all antibody mediated multi organ mm -hmm. dysfunction mm -hmm. syndrome. In that, one of the multi organ dysfunction syndrome is liver. Mm -hmm. That's why you are getting ectrus. That is an ectric phase. Ectric phase. Okay. Uh, ectric phase. Uh, that is known as uh, uh, wheel syndrome. Wheel syndrome. Containing fever, jaundice, renal failure. Mm. Uh, with uh, pulmonary affecting called pulmonary hemorrhage, which leads to ARDS. Okay. Uh, and Is it ARDS or simple ARDS or something else? Leptospira, if you are seeing white patches in the lungs, mm -hmm. is it simple ARDS or something else? Hemotysis. What is that? Alveolar hemorrhage. Alveolar hemorrhage. Alveolar hemorrhage. Alveolar hemorrhage. Alveolar hemorrhage. Alveolar hemorrhage. What is the mortality of that? More than 90, is very high. Uh, yeah. 80 to 90% mortality. mortality. So, once you see white shadows in the lungs in leptospira, it may not be simple ARDS. Okay. So, you can, when you are intubating, you can see full of blood in the tube. Mm -hmm. So, that is a very bad sign. Patient mostly, they will die. Okay. So, we have to be very careful. Okay. And uh, heart affected causes myocarditis, uh, pericarditis, and liver causes liver failure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so almost all organ in um, our body can be involved. CNS is Alias will be? Alias will be liver, uh, liver or renal failure. Renal. Well. Alias will be renal failure, but uh, vis visually you can see the ectrus. That's why it is called as ectric mm -hmm. phase. Then CNS surface goes on aseptic meningitis okay. with thromosoidopenia. What is this aseptic meningitis? Uh, blood culturally organism was not identified. in blood. Uh, CSF culturally blood okay. organs, organs was not identified okay. with uh, leukocytosis, normal glucose and low protein level. Okay. Uh, with the okay. thromosoidopenia is a hallmark feature of immune okay. phase of okay. leptospirosis. Mm -hmm. Then we started on uh, treatment, sir. What, uh, are the or, what are the antibiotics which can be given in leptospirosis? And doxycycline we can give, benzathin, ben, crystalline penicillin we can give 1.5 million units uh, every 6th hourly. Doxycycline 100 mg BOD for uh, 7 days. Astromycin uh, 500 mg OD for 7 days we can give. Ceftriaxin we can give. What you cannot give? You can give anti any antibiotic will kill mm -hmm. leptospira. It's a very weak uh, uh, organism. Okay. So whatever antibiotic you start, it will die. Okay, crystalline penicillin alone is enough. Okay, no need to go for higher antibiotic. There is no known resistance for any antibiotic by leptospira. But only the problem is second phase of the disease. Whatever antibiotic you start, it may not work like first phase. Why it is like that? Uh, after one to seven days, then it is immune phase. Immune, immune phase, phase. Immune phase, phase of it may not, uh, it may not respond to your antibiotic like in the first phase. Mm -hmm. That is the only issue. Okay. If you start simple crystalline penicillin, the leptospira will subside. The oral doxycycline, IV doxycycline, all are good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, 
patient was treated and after uh, in 3 to 5 days uh, when uh, lab wise creatinine was 1.5 uh, otpt it is become 100 uh, on 105 and pt was uh, 120 pt na no, pt is normal sir normal uh crp becomes uh, 20 to uh, 14 initially then it is becomes down trending okay after 3 to 4 days patient was symptomatically better and your not but becomes normal okay so tell something about leptospira what you learned about leptospira uh, uh, by confirming diagnosis we can use blood samples for pcr and for serology and urine samples for for pcr CS, csf is taken in for aseptic meningitis patient with meningitis symptom features Uh, PCR is a rapid and accurate diagnostic uh, test for leptospirosis. It is initially positive on the in blood. It is positive initial seven days. Uh, then it becomes negative, and urine more uh, reliably present after one week of illness. Uh, uh, then the important features in uh, treatment of leptospirosis are the axonal reaction. Uh, it is because of uh, immune mediated reaction after the clearance of the uh, spiro spirocytes there is there is axonal reaction where else where else you get this type of reactions and there is axonal reaction or benefit antibiotic huh ah where all you get cryptococcus this this is a type of reaction and the name is only jaric eczema reaction suppose you uh, uh, treat meningitis with antibiotic without giving steroids what will happen what will happen same type of reaction capsule will be producing more inflammation in the csf and that produces acute complication mm. that's why we give steroids so in that leprosy when you start leprosy treatment that also produces same type of reaction but it's not a same process but that name is different mm. okay that's all so many conditions when you are treating with antibiotic you can see the acute reaction in hiv iris what is iris immune immune preconception inflammation syndrome. syndrome that is also same mm. so you don't have immunity but uh, suddenly you are starting uh, some antiviral immunity increases existing bacteria will die and that produces severe reaction or uh, the body will react against the uh, bacteria so one name of this one of the name of this reaction is jaric eczema reaction okay. but the basic mechanism is uh, uh, everywhere it is same okay. mm. what happened to this patient can yeah. live symptomatically better and okay. so how, how do you prevent uh, leptospirosis uh, what is the root of infection uh, that is creases of the skin we can count it with the okay. contaminated water what is the contamination Contamination by the urine of the rodents, mainly rodents. Rodents. Okay. Shed by the urine. The organs are shed by the urine. Okay. So in, when you are treating leptospirosis, only important thing is when you are seeing a chest X-ray with white shadows, bilateral white fluffy shadows, you have to be very careful. That can be pulmonary hemorrhagic syndrome. These patients will die on in in your ward. Okay. So that type of patients, you have to be very careful. Admit in ICU. Uh, if required, intubation is mandatory. in that type of patients otherwise most of the patients will recover from the leptospirosis at least in first week if they come uh, patient can recover without any problem before going to immune phase oh, yes anything else you want to add want to add nothing okay